Good morning. I'm Lloyd Ashman, a Franklin Pierce alumnus, class of 1969, classmates in the back, yay. <clears throat> a parent of an alumna, husband of an alumna, who's up front, there you go. A brother of an alumnus, a former board chair, in short, I bleed Franklin Pierce. It is my privilege to introduce my fellow trustees today. Please stand to be recognized as your name is called. First, we have former uh, board chairs, Michael Flynn, Michael Fallon, and Chris Flynn. I mix you up. <laughs> then current trustees, our current board chair, Steve Camarino, John Burke, Naomi Butterfield, B.J. Cooper, Betty DiPietro, Carlene Farrell, Carol Felicetta, Alfred Maruli, Jr., Robert Riley, and, <clears throat> and Kerry Stein. On behalf of the Board of Trustees, welcome to all of you. And thank you for joining us on this historic, yet typical Franklin Pierce moment, this typical Franklin Pierce event. We thank all of you who will speak today. Thank you for sharing your stories and experiences of Dr. Mooney, Franklin Pierce's sixth president, yet our first woman president, and our first alum president. As today's program includes a few speakers, I will keep my comments to a minimum. You can applaud that as well. <laughs> as our provost, the trustees so admired Dr. Mooney. She was energetic, grounded, a visionary, and an extremely effective provost. About six years before the board was charged with searching for a new president, and on very short notice, Kim did a remarkably great job stepping in as an interim president. When the time came to search for a new president, immediately Dr. Mooney's name was put on the top of our list. Enthusiastic support for Kim as a candidate was unanimous. She was experienced, understood Franklin Pierce from her many roles as a student, alumna, trustee, provost, and interim president. She was grounded, focused, on student success, bright, and we felt Kim had the bones to guide and lead Franklin Pierce into its next chapter. She gleaned our wholehearted support, giving us great optimism for the future of Pierce. Earlier I said, this is a typical Franklin Pierce event. As most of you know, at Franklin Pierce, we help our students and alumni achieve goals far greater than they could have possibly dreamed. When I came to Franklin Pierce in 1965, at this point you're supposed to say you don't look that old, <laughs> do you think I thought one day I was going to be the chairman of the board at this place? There's no way. When Kim came to Franklin Pierce as a young freshman in 1979, my first year on the board, do you think she thought one day I'm gonna be the president at this place? No way, no way. But this is the Franklin Pierce story. This remarkable place helps people achieve goals so much greater than they could have possibly dreamt. That is Franklin Pierce. So yes, this is a Franklin Pierce moment, a Franklin Pierce event. We are thrilled to be here today to install Kim Mooney, our sixth president, and to begin Franklin Pierce's next chapter. Well, enough from me. Let's get this event going. Please allow me to introduce C.C. Telfer, who will sing the national anthem. Bye. 
by the dawn's early light What so proudly we held At the twilight's last gleaming Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets regular the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, who say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the Thank you, Cece. I now ask that you draw your attention to the screens as we introduce you to President Kim Mooney by way of this video presentation. Thank you. The change in leadership is an important moment in the history of any college or university. It clearly delineates the beginning of a new era in time. Change brings with it some anxiety for sure, but also great hope. I was thinking the other day, when we reflect back over a period of time, we tend to say, during the Peterson years or during the Haggerty years, such and such happened. I think during these periods, the organization experiences various ups and downs that come to define us. We attribute these experiences to the leader associated with these times because we recognize the substantial contribution the president makes in leading us through the challenges of that day. This year has all the makings of being an incredibly exciting, historic year. When Kim talks about Franklin Pierce, it's always with a sense of pride and respect, and I think genuine gratefulness for what it meant to her as she was um, you know, a young woman who became a serious scholar and went on to do um, wonderful work. One of the reasons that Kim was so successful at St. Lawrence University as a faculty member right from the get-go, I believe, is her experience as an undergraduate at Franklin Pierce. That closeness, um, that interaction with faculty, not just in the classroom, but outside the classroom as well. This is one of the few places where you can walk outside, walk down uh, one of the walkways on campus and, and run into the president of the university and, and she'll know you by name. She'll, she'll welcome you and, and say hello. I think that what charmed me about classes, my undergraduate classes, motivated me to want to bring that kind of experience to future students. And I can say that learning how to become a faculty member, learning how to become an effective and engaging um, professor, uh, I, I drew from my memories of how Franklin Pierce faculty conducted their classes and the expectations that they had for us. Um, I think I, I brought that forward with me in my own professional life. 
As I think about Kim being um, in the role of president and why this is so amazing, there's so many reasons. One in particular is that she's an alumnus of the college. She's walked in the shoes of the students at Franklin Pierce. And she has the opportunity to take that experience and personal past and help build the future of Franklin Pierce. In our many discussions, we talked about how much we loved going there and her love for the school and her love for learning has always been evident in our conversations. She's taken roles of, of, of being a professor to being an administrator to being provost and now president of Franklin Pierce. Not only the first alumni, but the first woman president. Amazing to me. There's a kind of no nonsense uh... Uh, quality about Kim that I really admire. She's an absolutely straight shooter. Um, she has a tremendous capacity to say difficult things honestly, uh, things that need to be said. And she, so she, she brings a tremendous amount of courage, actually, to interpersonal courage uh, to leadership. But it's always done with a, a very kind of warm sense of humanity uh, and a sense of, you know, these are the facts. These facts constrain us. These are, these are the facts that give us the parameters of the work we have to do. And so let's just work with that. Let's, let's not duck it. Let's not be shy about it. Let's look it in the face. Any project or anything that she's ever involved in, she always, she, she goes in, you know, she's, she's always all in and ready to move forward. She's a very forward thinker, very broad thinker, um, can come up with a plan and a pathway to solving a problem or issue, and she's engaged in, in the world like that. That's the way she takes everything on. The president is a person who must be a diplomat, a confessor, a sounding board, an innovator, a protector of values, a consummate business person, and a person dedicated to education and the face of the university. All of this at one time, at the same time, and at all times. The challenge in being the president of a university at this period of time is maintaining the uniqueness of that university and also uh, having students who are graduating that are ready for a rapidly changing world. And that really is uh, the strength of Kim's in that she understands the uniqueness of Franklin Pierce in terms of the relationship to students and them each achieving their own potential. I know that she wants FPU students to be well prepared for their next steps in life, be that a graduate program, an internship, or a job. She really wants to make sure that they are prepared to succeed in their next step. There is a desire to keep the highly educated students that, that graduate from Franklin Pierce University in the state so that they become part of the solution uh, to the economy and, um, and also to, to bring the kinds of contributions that Franklin Pierce students typically bring to their communities. So um, that's part of the good work ahead. You know, 20 or 30 years from now, you'll look back and say, that's when it all came together. That's when we turned the corner. That's, you know, that was the beginning of this. And that's kind of who, what, who Kim is and what she does wherever she goes. Thank you. I'm now pleased to introduce our first speaker, Mike Vlachik, the President and CEO of the New Hampshire College and University Council. Mike? I am honored to provide excerpts from the proclamations received from New Hampshire Governor Christopher T. Sununu, U.S. Congresswoman Ann McLean Custer, New Hampshire Senate President Chuck Morse, and Senate District 12 Representative Kevin Avard. 
In their remarks, they offer thoughts and good wishes to the members of the university community who have gathered today to celebrate the installation ceremony of Dr. Kim Mooney as Pr Franklin Pierce University's sixth president. These proclamations state in part, with the distinction of being both the first female and the first alumna to serve in the role, Dr. Kim Mooney, class of 1983, is dedicated to forging a sustainable future for the university, focused on student success. We are fortunate that Franklin Pierce University calls New Hampshire its home. The university has earned an outstanding reputation for excellence in the classroom and for providing students with unmatched opportunities that prepare them for their futures. Over the years, we have watched the university grow and transform, adapting to the ever-changing landscape of higher learning, expanding to offer new programs to students seeking associate and bachelor degrees, and many acclaimed master's and doctoral degree programs. With your leadership, we believe the institution will continue to produce the kind of well-rounded graduates who are ready to tackle the challenges facing our state, nation, and world each and every day. Goes on to say, President Mooney has inspired an exciting era of evolution at Franklin Pierce under the guiding principles of collaboration, communication, and community. President Mooney is helping to foster a spirit of innovation on campus with experiential learning, research, and hands-on training through internships, and co-ops for Franklin Pierce students. Across her many roles at Franklin Pierce, President Mooney has remained devoted to one mission, ensuring that every student has a place at Pierce and the opportunity to discover their passion and greatest potential. Thanks, Mike. I'm gonna go off script here for a moment. This is gonna scare a few people in the back. <clears throat> but uh, there are so many really special people uh, in this room today, but one just caught my eye and I just wanted to introduce her, Dorothy Peterson. Dorothy, would you? <clears throat> Thank you, Dorothy, for being with us. <clears throat> See, that wasn't so bad, was it? Next, I'm pleased to, in, to introduce Dr. Daniel Sullivan, President Emeritus of St. Lawrence University, to the podium. Members of the Franklin Pierce University community, I can't begin to tell you what an honor it is for me to be with you on the occasion of Kim Mooney's installation as your president. My successor and colleague, Bill Fox, joins me in warm and heartfelt greetings from St. Lawrence University, where Kim grew and developed into the leader she is today. Almost immediately upon my arrival as president at St. Lawrence in 1996, I could see that she is a remarkable leader with a laser-like focus on getting right the core of a university's mission, its achievement of outs outstanding teaching and the enabling of student learning. In just her fourth year at St. Lawrence, she was named the Owen D. Young Outstanding Faculty Member, an award usually reserved for longtime members of the faculty. And in my first year as president, the student members of St. Lawrence's Omicron Delta Kappa Leadership Honorary tapped her for membership. St. Lawrence's best students were sending the strongest signal to the entire campus of their regard for her leadership and the impact of her teaching. In relatively quick succession, she became Associate Dean for Faculty Affairs, then Founding Director of St. Lawrence's pioneering Center for Teaching and Learning. There, she was both relentless and ingenious at engaging large numbers of faculty colleagues to pursue the kinds of pedagogy that research shows leads to learning on the part of students. To know what's effective, of course, one needs to work at finding out whether students actually learn. And so next came her appointment as Special Assistant to the President for Assessment and Chair of our Middle States Accreditation Steering Committee. Kim's most important legacy is her contribution to the improvement of teaching and learning at St. Lawrence, the most critical thing a university must do well. But you at Franklin Pierce also recognized her leadership long before this, inviting her in 2002 to become a member of the Board of Trustees that's when I knew that, she might, that we might eventually lose her to you. Perhaps even that she might someday become your president, believe it or not. 
and lose her we did, just as I retired in 2009. Beyond bringing greetings from St. Lawrence, installation organizers unwittingly took the huge risk of charging me to offer brief advice on thriving as a university president and enabling the Franklin Pierce community to flourish. When she asks, I've been giving Kim advice for a long time, so I don't really have anything new to say to her. But these things are, I think, worth repeating in public on, on this occasion. First, you've got to have a sense of humor, and Kim sure does. I love her laugh. Being a college president is tough work. The issues are complex, the answers aren't always clear, and the outcomes, outcomes sometimes bizarre and unintended. You've got to be able to take it and keep going. In Minnesota, where I live now, we have only two philosophers who have anything to say about higher education, Oli and Sven. And I've made sure Kim is up to speed on their views over the years. Here is their deepest higher education insight. Oli and Sven were having coffee at the Chatterbox Cafe in St. Paul. Sven says to Oli, I hear that little Oli has gone off to the university. What do you suppose he'll be when he finishes up? Oh, says Oli, I think 35 or 40. <laughs> so I can't see, but did she, did she laugh? At, uh, okay, okay. I think she's heard that one before also. Second, surround yourself with people who are not just highly competent in their professional specialties, but who have also had a liberal education, are broadly and deeply educated, can collaborate to make a contribution to the solution of a problem in a colleague's area, not just in their own. People who think systemically and make sure they understand that you expect them to speak the truth to you as they see it and that they feel free to speak the truth. Third, many decisions are made under circumstances of high uncertainty or with conflicting values in play so that right and wrong are not obvious or simple. Some decisions won't turn out the way you hoped. When that happens, own it and fix it quickly if fixing it is possible. Not doing so is the biggest mistake you can make, far worse than making a decision that turned, didn't turn out uh, the way you thought and hoped. Finally, uh, both of us became president of our alma maters, which is a wonderful thing. But it can also be a complexity. Super important for alumni presidents is understanding what the university currently is without looking through glasses colored by the past. You've got to focus on what it needs to become, not what it was, except as its history and traditions align with where it needs to go today. Franklin Pierce, you have found yourself a wonderful new president. What fun it will be to watch you succeed together. Thank you. Thank you for those wise words. I didn't realize I could tell jokes up here. I, that has a whole new dimension. <laughs> yeah, I guess we'll skip, we'll skip that portion. <laughs> Next, I'm pleased to introduce Dr. Deanna Denault, a member of the graduate faculty in the Masters of Phys Physician Assistant Studies program. Good morning. What a glorious day. It is truly a privilege and an honor to speak to you on this glorious day, and I extend a warm and welcome, warm welcome to our sixth president, Dr. Kim Mooney. Today, we have heard, from, we, today we will hear that Franklin Pierce is described as a young institution, and I therefore would offer that the physician assistant program is an infant. Many in the audience today may appreciate the challenges sacrifices and rewards associated with raising a child. And the same is also true of initiating and nurturing new academic programs. As our provost, Dr. Mooney was integral to the growth and development of the CGPS programs. These programs are diverse and include physical therapy, education, business, and the physician assistant program. During our early stages, she recognized and responded to the challenges associated with clinical and professional programs, especially the unique interface with clinical and professional, 
with, with, between clinical practice and academics and has guided us through these challenges successfully. Her energy, optimism, and leadership led to the expansion of new graduate programs that have notably had a positive impact on the undergraduate programs and paved ways for new pathways for incoming students. What a tremendous impact this has had on the university and the lives of so many. Dr. Mooney's enduring commitment to our success has resulted in the matriculation and graduation of a number of outstanding healthcare providers, many of whom are now practicing in the Monadnock region and underserved areas of Vermont and New Hampshire. Her impact, quite frankly, is immeasurable, and I am proud to include it in my remarks in today's storyline. As with all families, there are several relationships that are central to the building of a solid foundation. Dr. Mooney is our strong, centering figure. As provost and now president, Dr. Mooney, we look to you to hold us together as a unified university and on behalf of all the faculty, students, and staff of the diverse CGPS program and family, we are grateful for all that you have accomplished. We look forward to your continued leadership for this educational institution that we all recognize you love so very much. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Denault. Next, I'm pleased to welcome to the podium Dr. Katherine Owen Koenig, a member of the undergraduate faculty in the Division of Natural Sciences. Dr. Koenig. Good morning. A good number of years ago, we won't say exactly how many, an 18-year-old Franklin Pierce College student named Kim Mooney scampered up the White Dot Trail to the top of Mount Monadnock. At the summit, she was met with an expanse of rocky granite and probably a few dozen other intrepid climbers. To the southeast, Pearly Pond glittered in the autumn sunlight, much as it does today. Otherwise, the landscape she saw around the college was vastly different. Buildings around the pond were few and far between. There were no towers, no Lakeview apartments, no bubble, not even a campus center, I believe. Soaring over the heads of Kim and her hiking companions was, then is now, a small group of ravens. Shiny with sleek coal black feathers and a myriad of different calls, these birds could be seen most any day over the rocky top of the mountain. Taking advantage of the thermal winds blowing up from the valley, the ravens coast effortlessly on the updrafts, scanning for food and then finding shelter in the rocky outcrops. On Mount Monadnock, the mountain that stands alone, the ravens and thousands of other species find home. The common raven is known to be a very intelligent, curious, and observant animal, but it is a social one as well. The raven defends its own its home territories, uh, home territory from intruders, yet they can also be very cooperative. A flock of ravens is called a conspiracy, reflecting their goal, their group-focused and goal-oriented approach to survival in the wild. The raven takes care of its own. These clever birds are also very resourceful, always mindful of the economics of finding food. Also, as scavengers, raven uh, ravens perform an important service in the ecosystem, keeping it clean and recycling nutrients. They do not foul their nest. They watch over their environment. Like any social animal, ravens instinctively understand the three pillars of true sustainability, social, economic, and environmental. If one of these pillars is weak, the whole structure will crumble. Humans have taken longer to learn these lessons, but with good leadership, we're getting there. Many years later, we won't say how many, President Kim Mooney clambered up the White Dot Trail in the company of hundreds of Franklin Pierce students, staff, and faculty. Atop the mountain, the bald summit hosted no less than several hundred fearless climbers. The lessons of the mountain and its ravens were not lost on her. As she gazed down on the now transformed Ringe campus, also thinking over the distance about Goodyear, Arizona, Lebanon, Manchester, and Portsmouth, she knew that enormous challenges lay ahead of her. But like the Ravens, she understands that sustainability means more than food and finances. She knows we also need diversity, social justice, and a healthy environment in order to thrive. With the courage, intelligence, and loyalty of a Raven, 
President Mooney will bring this wonderful university to new heights of achievement on all three fronts. She has already set out ambitious first goals, which we know she will build on even further towards true, balanced sustainability. Her tasks are not easy, but she has a huge family of ravens, a conspiracy perhaps, standing with her, sharing her vision, and ready to work for a fulfilling, viable, and green future for Franklin Pierce University. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. Next, I'm pleased to introduce Derek Scalia, Associate Director of Student Involvement. Derek. Greetings to the Board of Trustees, members of the faculty, honored guests, students, and most importantly, President Mooney. It's an honor to stand here today to represent the staff at your installation. Franklin Pierce has been a part of my life for many years, both as a student and now as a staff member. Over these years, I have seen this fine institution increase in size. But more importantly, I have seen it grown in depth and spirit. It is this spirit that defines who we are and the foundation on which we serve. Any great organization is only as strong as its mission. President Mooney has challenged us to engage with purpose as we serve the university students through this mission. The Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy describes intentionality as the power of minds to be about, to represent, and to stand for things. I'm inspired by the intentionality with which President Mooney addresses issues and topics in her leadership of our university, in the choices and decisions she makes. It is not merely decisions, but rather reflections, a reflection of who we are and what we desire to be. This reflection asks the hard questions that moves beyond solving problems and seeks ways to further define Franklin Pierce University. Is it, it is an act that believes in the process and produces results that are both sustainable and fruitful. Our work in higher education is to take the student experience deeper. This challenge was recently reflected by President Mooney as she called upon our entire community to engage in the work of inclusion. We are best when we grow together with many perspectives and experiences. This call by President Mooney represented the responsibility that we have as staff members to the growth and depth of student development. Through her leadership and her passion for Franklin Pierce, she speaks daily that the work we do has meaning, that education is found throughout, and that our passion builds upon the soul of our community. President Mooney, I say I am grateful for the opportunity to work with you on this journey. And I offer congratulations to you from myself and from the staff of our fine university on this historic achievement. Congratulations. Thank you. Next, please welcome to the podium Jessica Harpel, an undergraduate student and the class of 2020 president. Greetings. My name is Jessica Harpel, and I'm a student who, like President Mooney, came to Franklin Pierce from Connecticut. Last year, I served as freshman class president, and my peers elected me again this year to serve as their sophomore class president. I also work in residential life as a community assistant. Here's the interesting thing. I have lived my entire life in Connecticut, and although I've only been here in Ringe for about a year, I consider this place my home. What does that say about this community? The people you see here on this campus are my family. Let there be no doubt, I am a raven. 
So welcome to my home, and on behalf of all Franklin Pierce University students, we welcome you all to Raven Nation. It is a great honor for me to represent the student body on such a joyous occasion, to greet the distinguished guests gathered here, and to be part of installing our new president, a leader who was one of us, a former Franklin Pierce student. To steal one of her phrases, President Mooney is part of our DNA. Try to Students are both inspired and delighted that one of our own who earned her undergraduate degree here, went on to graduate school and achieved academic and professional success elsewhere, has ultimately returned home to assume the presidency of this terrific educational institution. Try to imagine how this progression makes students feel. Let me help you, it feels darn good. <laughs> my most meaningful encounter with President Mooney goes all the way back to my freshman year. As a member of the Student Government Association, I was tasked with working on a student-initiated program related to diversity that would be a part of the academic showcase, a day where we take off classes and highlight the best work of our students. As many of you already know, we are very proud of our diversity here at Franklin Pierce. In fact, approximately 26% of my incoming class last year was comprised of students of color. That is a real strength. Unquestionably, it is one of the things that makes our whole community so strong. Probably because she feels the same passion about this campus as the students do, she asked what she could do to make this an even better program, a remarkable one for the student go government and the student body. She volunteered to pitch in, to show up, and to help out, and we really appreciated her personal help. For students, having Dr. Kim Mooney as president makes it clear to us that we look, when we look in the mirror as students, we can imagine what we might also achieve in the future. It inspires us, President Mooney, to be our best selves here in Ringe, as we venture beyond campus and in the cities and towns near and far, where we will make new personal and career connections. So in closing, President Mooney, I'd like to take a moment to thank you for your help and for caring about this university as much as we do. Thank you for being our mirror and for being such a great raven. On behalf of the student body, I extend congratulations and offer good wishes and the best of luck to you in your ongoing leadership and in all of your work as president of Franklin Pierce University. Thank you, Jessica. Oh, I just got to turn three pages. This is big. <clears throat> Next, representing the alumni, please welcome Robert Riley, also known as Bob, class of 1982 to the podium. Bob. <laughs> Lloyd was debating with me whether I should go by Bob or Robert, and I told him I was indifferent on that, but uh, thank you. Good morning and welcome. Welcome to our family, friends, honored guests, alums, and certainly Kim Mooney. What a special day for Franklin Pierce. As a friend, as an alumnus, and as a classmate, I'm thrilled to be part of today's celebration to recognize Kim Mooney as our sixth president. We at Franklin Pierce often describe ourselves as a very young institution. Well, we are young, just over 50 years young, and we have reached a notable milestone. This institution has now seated its first female and first alumna serving in the role of president. It's an historic mark on this university's timeline. It's not only a special day for Kim and Greg, but for the entire university and its alums. Our alums are proud of you, and Franklin Pierce should be equally proud of itself. Kim, you are one of its success stories. Over the summer, I had an opportunity to reach out to a number of Kim's classmates. All I spoke with were excited and recognized the opportunity this presents this institution. I wanted to replay one story that stood out to me as I think it I think it speaks to the beginning steps of a lifelong relationship that benefits us all. The story is from Regina Matos, class valedictorian from 1983. Her note to me reads, I have to share a story with you. It happened on the night before we graduated. We were in the field house at dinner, and I was talking with Kim, and she began to cry, but not really happy tears. I asked her what was wrong. 
and Kim said she was sad because she didn't want to leave Pierce. It was like a home to her and that she would miss it so much. Over the years, Kim found her way back to her home at Pierce. She never really wanted to leave and now she's home again. Gina continued to express that the school community is far stronger as a result of Kim's return, her commitment and her involvement to lead Franklin Pierce forward. We know Kim is ready for this role. In fact, she already has a year under her belt. I think she can take a deep breath and look back at a year of accomplishments. Our alums should know that Kim is a president with a focused vision for the long-term success of Franklin Pierce. We're in great, great hands. I'd like to conclude with a passage I found in Kim's yearbook. <laughs> it grabbed my attention and it speaks to a vision. It reads, I stand at the base of this mountain knowing that I reached an end and a new beginning. I would like to reach back and perhaps afraid to let go, but the past slips away, eludes my grasp. I know too that I stand at a new beginning, what lies before me. I have no other choice but to pick up the pieces of my hopes and dreams and climb the mountain myself. I must carry those pieces to unknown places and unknown heights, meet new faces, and hear new ideas. And amid mistakes, work my way higher and higher to make this mountain wider and more splendid than even I can now imagine. Kim, on behalf of all alums, we're so proud and look so forward to this climb of this mountain, this journey to not only sustain us, but to make us more proud of Franklin Pierce and develop new Franklin Pierce success stories. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. Next, I am pleased to introduce Beth Mooney Stokes and Tracy Mooney, representing the Mooney family. Good morning. My name is Tracy Mooney and I am Kim's younger sister. I know I'm speaking the obvious. <laughs> I went off script, okay. I know I speak for my family when I say I am so very proud to be here today for the installation of my sister Kim as the sixth president of Franklin Pierce University. I know Kim is grateful for the outpouring of support from her family and very dear friends who have traveled distances to witness this historic event. I spoke to Kim a few weeks ago and we started discussing what remarks she might make today. She said she wanted it to be about the university and that is typical of her. But today I'm gonna to make it about Kim. Kim may be the first woman president of Franklin Pierce University and the first alum to serve in that capacity but one of my favorite firsts about Kim is quite personal. You see, the president of Franklin Pierce University was my first roommate. <laughs> we shared a room at 74 Putney Drive in West Haven, Connecticut, in the house where we grew up, and that is where our lifelong bond began. I will share with you a few things about our relationship growing up. When we were younger, I was just enough years younger than Kim that I wasn't cool enough to hang around with her or her friends, but just old enough where my opinion on her singing voice was highly sought after because as a little sister I didn't have the heart to say anything other than you have a great voice <laughs> and then there was the Duffy curse <laughs> a malady from which my father insisted Kim suffered you see our grandmother's maiden name was Duffy and apparently the Duffys really liked to talk a lot Kim may not know this, but my father could often be seen standing behind her mouthing the words, Duffy curse, <laughs> when she was really on a roll. 
And for the academics in the audience, there was no shared governance in the Mooney household. <laughs> our mother Florence and our father Bill ruled the roost. Work ethic, leading by example, doing the right thing, treating people well, and getting the most out of your education were the staples of our upbringing. Quite frankly, I believe all of those qualities are the cornerstone of leadership. And I think Kim would agree that a lot of what we learned on Putney Drive in our childhood home has served her well and prepared her for this very important chapter. So we learned a lot from our parents, but we learned a lot from each other as well. Over the years, Kim has taught me many things. She taught me how to bop, because my mother only sent two of her three daughters to dance school, and I was not one of them. <laughs> Kim taught me to appreciate the music of Joni Mitchell, because she had sole control of the stereo. <laughs> she taught me that sometimes when you wish you had your own room, and your sister leaves for college, and that opportunity presents itself, that maybe it's not all it's cracked up to be. She taught me how to be strong and stand up for myself, because if I didn't, she would. She taught me that sisters are a wonderful gift given to you by your parents. Today, we collectively celebrate Dr. Kim Mooney as the sixth president of Franklin Pierce University. But quite honestly, I believe there are many celebrations taking place here today. Our mother is celebrating your daughter's success and everything that she has wished for her. Kim's soulmate, partner, and our brother Greg is celebrating the love of his life and her historic accomplishment. And I'm always glad to see the Walsh family. <laughs> My sister Beth and I are celebrating our wonderful gifted sibling whose generosity knows no bounds. Our niece Lauren is probably a little bit nervous that she has an awful lot to live up to, perhaps now the Mooney curse. Our oldest and dearest hometown friends, her fellow alum, and her North Country peeps, who are all silently smirking in the audience, thinking, oh, what stories we could tell. <laughs> Kim, there's a lot of love and respect in this room, and you own every bit of it. So congratulations to you, and congratulations to Franklin Pierce University. Thank you. Good morning, I am Beth Mooney Stokes, Kim's older sister. Not by much. <laughs> I do believe by definition, we're considered Irish twins. I'll also keep my remarks to Kim because she has plenty to say about Franklin Pierce University. When I was first asked to say a few things about Kim, I was honored, yet I struggled because there's still some things our mother doesn't know about our antics and I wanted to keep it that way. <laughs> Kim and I share a lot of memories from childhood through adulthood. Because of our closeness and age, we share a lot of the same friends, went through elementary school, middle school, and high school together. Kim went off to Franklin Pierce for college and the North Country, and I remained in Connecticut. Despite the distance, we have remained very close. I know enough about Kim to be a little bit dangerous, but I'll keep it safe and interesting. I'm going to share a few things that you may or may not know about Kim. If you see her on campus, you can ask her for the details. <laughs> things you probably do know about Kim. Her generosity of heart and spirit is unmatched. Her love of the North Country and Franklin Pierce is decades in the making. Her dedication to family and friends is unyielding. She is kind, very, very kind. Kim is non-judgmental, and she can listen, as well as talk. Things you may not know about Kim. Kim walked everywhere when we were younger. She didn't attempt to show interest in or receive her driver's license until she was 20-something. <laughs> she had me to drive her around when her destination was beyond the city limits. 20-something may be a bit of a stretch, but not by much. Kim has invented something called a GGP. I'm not sure it's been patented yet. GGP is a general game plan. If you're a Mooney, 
you know exactly what that is. And folks, it's not general, it's exact. A general game plan, as defined by Kim, is what are we doing, when are we doing it, and what are we having to eat? <laughs> so word of advice. Before you plan anything with Kim, have those answers ready and you'll be good to go. Thanks, Kim. You've generously passed that trade on to Lauren. Kim has a very dry sense of humor and a small streak of menace. This is definitely a trait Tracy, Kim, and I share. All to varying degrees, but very powerful when combined. You should probably stand 10 feet back if you see the three of us huddled at any point. It makes our mom very nervous. Hi, mom. At this moment in time, our mom is as proud as could be and our dad is enjoying this from his perch in heaven. I have shared some thoughts about Kim as a sister. As a person, Franklin Pierce has chosen a leader with integrity, commitment, and passion. I'm very proud of you, Kim, and happy for Franklin Pierce. Kim will lead this university with her generosity of heart and spirit, her loyalty and dedication, and perhaps just the touch of GGP. Thank you. Thank you so much. To begin the investiture of Dr. Kim Mooney, sixth president of Franklin Pierce University, I'd like to welcome chairman of the board of trustees, Stephen Camerino to the podium. Steve. Thank you, Lloyd. And thank you so much, Lloyd, particularly for your great work and support for Franklin Pierce over the years that has had such a meaningful impact on your alma mater. To all of you assembled here, to join in celebration today on this beautiful campus. Good morning, and welcome to this historic ceremony. The official investiture of Dr. Kim Mooney, sixth president of Franklin Pierce University. I know that Dr. Mooney shares your pride in Franklin Pierce in so many ways. She has often noted that the education she received here served as a valuable platform for further learning and for a distinguished ongoing career in higher education. Not surprisingly, it has been the sense of community, a community that provides its students with a place in which to learn and grow and flourish, that she has often singled out as one of the most meaningful aspects of her early Franklin Pierce experience. This same sense of community has been cited by so many highly accomplished Frank Franklin Pierce alumni as the base on which they have built many of their achievements. Part of this university's mission statement notes that, quote, a Franklin Pierce experience enables each student to discover and fulfill his or her own unique potential. It further states, we prepare students to become confident, knowledgeable individuals and leaders of conscience. Dr. Mooney has exemplified this mission over the years in her scholarly achievements as a graduate student, earning her PhD in social psychology from the University of New Hampshire, and moving on to pursue a rewarding career as a psychology faculty member and academic administrator at St. Lawrence University in New York. During her 20-year tenure at St. Lawrence, she excelled at teaching, authored articles in peer-reviewed publications, wrote successfully funded grant proposals, and regularly presented her scholarship at national higher education conferences. At St. Lawrence, she was the Associate Dean for Faculty Affairs, served as the founding director of the Center for Teaching and Learning and as the special assistant to the president for assessment. Dr. Mooney's commitment to her alma mater spans three decades, from serving with distinction on the Alumni Association Board of Trustees to serving the Franklin, University, Franklin Pierce University Board of Trustees as chair of the Academic Affairs Committee, to stepping in for a time as interim president, and most recently, prior to her presidency, as the university's provost and vice president for academic affairs. 
In her years since returning to Franklin Pierce to serve as provost and now as president, Dr. Mooney has remained true to her alma mater's mission of serving every student as part of a community that is committed to excellent teaching and learning and to doing good. A presidential installation and the chains of office are parts of an academic tradition dating back to the Middle Ages and the great rise of universities. Chains of office are massive metal necklaces worn by a university president on ceremonial occasions as part of his or her regalia. The chains can be made of bronze, sterling silver, or gold plate, and are usually anchored by a large medallion depicting the university seal. Here are the Franklin Pierce University presidential medallions. The university seal forms the centerpiece medallion of the ceremonial chain that is worn by the president of Franklin Pierce University. Six gold medallions represent the tenure of six presidents. The, med the medallions form the chain and symbolize the continuity of the university's traditions. The names and years of service for each president are indicated on each medallion. At this point, I would like to ask Dr. Mooney to come forward to accept this medallion to mark this installation. We know you will build on the accomplishments of your predecessors and on the early successes that you have already achieved over the past year as you continue the proud legacy and bring Franklin Pierce University to new heights locally, nationally, and internationally as a deeply respected institution of higher education. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the sixth president of Franklin Pierce University, Dr. Kim Mooney. Thank you. Good morning. How are the students doing back there behind the, the seating? Good? It is humbling and inspiring today to enjoy the company of incredibly special people from every stage of my life. My childhood friends from West Haven, Connecticut, friends and classmates from my undergraduate years at Franklin Pierce, faculty from my graduate program at the University of New Hampshire, colleagues and friends from my enriching years at St. Lawrence University and the wonderful community of Canton, New York, delegates, friends from higher education and the Monadnock communities, and of course the dedicated faculty, staff, wonderful students and alumni the University Board of Trustees, the Mooney, Harger, and Walsh families, especially my parents, my mom Florence is here, my sisters, all of whom have such impressive, impressive senses of purpose and integrity and humor, they have elevated my own. And Greg, my husband and dance partner, whose boundless support of me in this university is already legendary. Thank you, and thank you, Mrs. Peterson, for being here. Thank you for honoring me and Franklin Pierce with your presence. So like many of you, my own connections to Franklin Pierce, to its people, its programs, to its beautiful natural setting, 
to the mountain and to its unique place in higher education runs long and deep. This connection, as you've heard, has given definition to over 35 years of my life. And the arc of our shared history brings us here today. Affirming an observation made by our founding president, Frank DiPietro, who said, a college is an institution that truly affects eternity. And as a first generation college student, I can attest that a Franklin Pierce education is an investment with a, with a lifetime of returns. After serving on the board, serving as provost and vice president for academic affairs, and just over a year ago, starting my new role as president of my alma mater, both the fact that I'm the first woman and the first alumna president speaks to this university's youth and to its coming of age. There are likely few college or university presidents in American higher education who are, who are as fortunate as I am to be able to say, I have known all of my predecessors and, I, and we are still able to enjoy the company of alumni from the first graduating class. I cherish these realities. So while higher education in America dates back to the 1600s and is evident in your programs, many colleges in the Northeast were founded in, excuse me, it dates back to the 1600s, many of the colleges here today were founded in the 1800s, Franklin Pierce University's origin dates back to the early 1960s, a time of civil and student unrest, political protest and resistance, international wars and uncertainties, and calls for leadership. Sound familiar? Franklin Pierce University opened its doors in 1963, committed to preparing future leaders, and it is that thread sewn into the fabric of our young institution that has stretched and strengthened over time. Our youth as an institution is to our benefit. It energizes innovation, it tests boundaries, and it keeps us agile. With four graduate and professional centers beyond Ringe, with academic programs offered in multiple formats, we welcome students to make our options work for their educational goals. Study on campus, of course. Study fully online, we offer that too. Enroll on campus and take courses online, we encourage it. Study as a part of a doctoral cohort, join us. We are the university of choice for the Master of Physician Assistant Studies students who commit to our mission of bringing access to healthcare to rural locations, helping us reach the number two ranking in the United States for providing physician assistance to those underserved populations. We are the university of choice for the single mom who joins us part-time online in an effort to enhance her capacity to both provide and for and inspire her children. We are the university of choice for the 18-year-old who dreams of being the first college graduate in their family. Access to higher education is a driving value of this university. And Franklin Pierce graduates have applied their educations, their career preparation, their leadership skills all over the globe and across myriad industries. Franklin Pierce alumni hold leadership positions from Paramount, ESPN, Disney, and USA Football to Morgan Stanley and Lloyd's of London. They have established careers as university faculty and scholars, special agents in the FBI, police and fire chiefs, news anchors and editors in chief, and as elected government officials. They are entrepreneurs, physical therapists, actors and television producers. They own restaurants and hotels and some have even been drafted by Major League Baseball and the Women's National Basketball Association. We are incredibly proud of our alumni. As America finds itself at, at a crossroads when it comes to addressing the mounting changes and challenges facing higher education, and those of us in higher education can list them in our sleep, the next revolution that will define us, that will define higher education, is not yet entirely clear. But it is that unrelenting challenge and uncertainty which galvanizes my resolve to commit to creative, thoughtful, and fluid leadership of Franklin Pierce as we design a sustainable future. And I will borrow here from the definition offered by Dan Sullivan in 2016. 
A sustainable university is one whose educational programs are organized and structured to produce graduates prepared for work, life, civic engagement, and service, creating demand for the institution and its programs. With that in mind, two fundamental beliefs invigorate my work every day. The first, although the perceived value of a college or university degree is in decline, higher education remains an essential investment for the future health of our country and democracy. And the second is that Franklin Pierce University is a precious resource to New England, to the entire region, and to the states of New Hampshire and Arizona because our programs and our graduates are integral to the civic engagement and, and economies beyond our boundaries. And there's ample evidence for the first belief. Uh, national data tells us that those Americans with bachelor's degrees contribute to the communities in which they live with higher levels of volunteerism, community service, donations to charities, and voting and political involvement. So the second premise, and closer to home, the precious resource of Franklin Pierce University, one of my priorities as president is to advocate for more intentional engagement with our local communities, not only lending to the vibrancy and health of the communities in which we live, but also to our own sustainability. Again, creating the demand for the institution and its programs. At Franklin Pierce, we have been asking ourselves and business and industry sectors in New Hampshire what is it about a Franklin Pierce education that might serve the region and the state's talent imperative? How might we at Franklin Pierce work with you, co-create with you a living learning laboratory that serves our collective needs and aspirations? We are listening to our neighbors. We're collaborating on institutional responses and we're cultivating partnerships. We actively review, reaffirm, and renew our academic portfolio. Whether it's affording non-traditional learners and state employees opportunities to earn university credit for work and life experiences, or defining our undergraduate learning outcomes to foster in Franklin Pierce students the intellectual substance and skills that will serve them well into their futures, or providing for thousands of town and city workers around the state affordable options, tuition discounts, and accelerated time to degrees through our municipal partnerships. We are committed to creating a demand for this institution and its programs. And the most recent example of an educational partnership that will help our students while, ha while helping a thriving business in our own backyard is the university's partnership with CNS Wholesale Grocers in Keene, and I'm happy to see Mark Freiberg here today. Welcome. <laughs> CNS, for those of you who, are not, uh, who do not live in this area but may not require living in this area, to know that CNS Wholesale Grocers is the largest grocery supply company in the, in the United States and the industry leader in supply chain innovation. We have just uh, announced uh, a four-year CNS Scholars Program built on paid internships and cooperatives that offer our students direct application of coursework and learning goals. And although this is a new educational model for us, we believe it is entirely consistent with our commitment to experiential learning. And I'll quote from Richard Freeland's article, Liberal Education and Effective Practice, when he said, the goal of experiential learning is to enrich liberal learning by connecting it more strongly with the lives students will actually live after college. And in the case of the CNS Scholars Program, it is also a potential pathway to full-time employment after graduation. And so we do see this template as, as truly viable for us and for our students, and we look forward to it and uh, to developing more in partnership around the region and around the state. But something else happens when you, when you develop this kind of um, idea, and that is the rich and ongoing discussions between Franklin Pierce University leadership and CNS leadership, along with other conversations, are, are reshaping, in some ways, our schema for how we think about institutional partnerships, partnerships and mutual sustainability. As we consider the economic impact of the university in all of the regions it exists, 
and as we think about the institutional resources invested to recruit smart, motivated students to our campuses, we have to think past a four-year or program-specific retention timeline. We all win if the students we educate on our Ringe campus or at our Lebanon, Portsmouth, Manchester, and Goodyear centers become our partner organizations and partner municipalities, volunteers, interns, or co-op students. And ultimately, they become the prepared employees ready to emerge as leaders. So these opportunities allow us to test new educational paradigms at a time when the future format of higher education and the careers of the future are not yet fully understood or imagined. So we're very excited about this. Finally, the Franklin Pierce community from New Hampshire to Arizona is committed to the strategic shaping of our future. We do so without sacrificing our institutional DNA. Thanks, Jessica, for picking up on that. Somebody's listening. I do say that rather often, institutional DNA. We know ourselves. We are a community empowered by our resilience, enriched by our diversity, emphatic in our belief in the potential of every student. And because we believe that student life is the start of a full life, we have always, as former Dean, dean of Students Owen Houghton has said, where are you, Owen? We've always turned students loose to lead. So the essence of this young institution, for me, was best ex expressed in a Founders Day speech delivered by late Professor Emeritus Bill Ball, a professor from whom I was fortunate to learn. When he recounted the words of a long-serving staff member who said, from the beginning of Franklin Pierce, from when we were first incorporated, a soul came with this college. Thank you, Board of Trustees, for not only entrusting me with foraging a sustainable future for Franklin Pierce, but for entrusting me with its soul. Ex umbris ad lucem. Thank you, President Mooney. Listening to you speak, I just filled with pride, and pride to have known you for, I guess, close to two decades. Pride that you were leading this institution, our, our institution, our Franklin Pierce. I'm just, just thrilled. I can't imagine the pride that you must be feeling. You did a good job. Thank you, Kim. Michael Tyrone Brown, class of 2012, will now sing the Franklin Pierce alma mater. Michael? Where is he? There he is. Franklin Pierce. Franklin Pierce, we remember well, small and grand, you will stand, we remember well. Friends we knew, there we grew, all our dreams at hand. Mountain ponds, skies of blue, Grandma Nadnock's land. Beacon bright, time will tell. In our hearts you'll dwell. In our hearts, Franklin Peace. 
we remember well we remember Okay, I believe that finally, the Reverend Bill Beardsley will now deliver the benediction. Bill? Kim, I uh, just have been dying to say, with a breath of fresh air, congratulations, Madam President. <laughs> In the name of the soul of Franklin Pierce University and the spirit of all life, I bring you these adapted words from scholar, teacher, and pastor, Reverend Barbara Brown Taylor, penned for a benediction at Old South Church in Boston. Encouraged, therefore, by the best of our forebears, and chastened by the worst of them, we hoist our sails in this new day for President Mooney, Franklin Pierce University students, faculty, administrators, friends, family, and alumni, for we are in this together. We sail the same seas and are imperiled by the same storms. For these are perilous times, the expansiveness of the enlightenment giving way to dangerous absolutisms, the promise and beauty of pluralism succumbing to violent tribalism, a grand experiment in democracy reverting to a mean and narrow theocracy whose power is not in moral force but in weapons and a vision of we the people falling prey to an aristocracy of the wealthy. All is not well with God's blessed creation, but, oh God, we are well on this ship called Franklin Pierce University. We are beckoned by a future we dare believe can be better than what we have come to. Therefore, open us to the Spirit's winds of change. Let us set out knowing the blessing of the gift of life, these incredible minds and bodies, the gifts of leadership embodied in President Mooney and all who steward this grand institution. Guide us all, great spirit of life and love. Amen. <laughs>